Welcome to Dunseverick Baptist Church this Sunday evening. We thank you for joining us online for our evening gospel service. Let us worship the Lord. The psalmist says, Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song and praise in the congregation of the saints. Let us exactly do that. Let us praise his name with the first hymn that's going to appear on the screen, that it's worship from the depths of our hearts together. This time it's number 208. Number 208. Low in the grave he lay, Jesus my Saviour, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Hymn number 208 in the hymn book, standing please. and we'll continue on with our service. As the pastor of the Church Assembly and Fellowship here at Dunseverick Baptist, I would like to express our sympathy, so on behalf of the Church Fellowship, our sympathy to Lorraine. Lorraine is the daughter of Raymond Gilmore and Raymond is from Stranocum. And Raymond attended this church on a Sunday evening over many years 
and we were shocked and saddened to hear of his passing away on Thursday of this last week. And our prayers are with you, Lorraine, and the whole family circle at this time. Let's unite our hearts in prayer now. And if we want to know God's presence, his power, his blessing, we need the Lord tonight. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your salvation. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving your life upon the cross of Calvary to redeem our souls. We thank you that there is power in the blood, wonder, working power to make the foulest sinner clean. And we thank you, Lord, for that work that, that, that has been concluded when you cried, it is finished. Lord, we thank you that tonight each and every one who listens to this message online can come into a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ where they are. Lord, we pray that you bless all aspects of this gathering, this meeting. Lord, the singing of the hymns, the blood washed band who are going to take part tonight, and the word of God that you would apply it to our hearts. Lord, we not only pray for your blessing upon this meeting, but upon those as well who are sick. And there are some, Lord, who uh, are having difficulties at this time, whether with coronavirus whether with cancer or another ailment. And we just pray that you draw alongside and you touch them in body and soul and mind. And Lord, also for those who sorrow, we're reminded of your word when you say, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And Lord, we just pray for Lorraine and the whole family circle, and the passing away of our brother Raymond this past few days. And Lord Jesus, we know that he is now with thee. We pray, Lord, that you would just comfort that family circle and friends, especially, Lord, having to conduct a funeral service under these social conditions at this time where large gatherings are not permitted. So, Lord, we just pray, bless that family and bless others who are in the same situation. Lord, again, we give to you all the honour and the glory Bless this service tonight in Christ our Saviour's name. Amen. Amen. I want to deal with the announcements very briefly. Again, thank you for joining us online for our Sunday evening service. Do remember the next service that will be online will be on Tuesday evening. And that's our Bible study. And this week in Revelation Revealed, we are studying Revelation chapter 3 and the three churches that are mentioned in that particular chapter. So join us at 8pm on Tuesday evening for that online service. Then do remember our thought for the day that goes up every morning around about 9am and I thank James for that and also for our young people. There we have re-engaged because of the lockdown that there is upon our, our schools etc. We've re-engaged with our Dunseverick Baptist Youth Facebook page as well as the WhatsApp ministry and hopefully soon a Zoom ministry to the young people. So if you can watch that, well, I hope that you are encouraged through that page and that ministry as well. With regards then, the work of God here at our church, I want to thank Sam Gordon who has been the preacher today at our open air meetings, our drive-in services and from next week on, which will be the beginning of November, November the 1st, we continue with our drive-in service at 11 a.m. But there is a change in the evening. In the evening, we are moving our evening service into the church. And that is largely because of the time of change there is with the clock, but also the weather. And it can be cold now these evenings. But what we're doing as well as having our service here at 6 p.m. on the Sunday evening in the church, we'll also have a facility where the speakers will be set up outside in the car park beside the church building for those who still don't have the confidence to come into the inside, into the church building. So there is a facility there. I'll be preaching in the church and you'll be able to hear from your car and hopefully through the digital uh, radio service as well. 
So both are being catered for as we go forward at this time of unprecedented uh, uncertainty with regards meetings etc but there will be meetings 11 a.m drive in and 6 p.m then both within the church and you'll be able to listen then in your car in the car park as well so that's all by way of announcements so it is and they're all made according to god's good and perfect will and now we have the pleasure tonight to have taking part in our evening service the blood wash gospel band from Carrick Fergus and that's where they have recorded the piece for us and uh, thank them for taking the time and may the Lord bless your hearts through this piece that you're going to hear. band for your ministry to our hearts tonight that was beautiful uh ulster scotch type music set to the gospel that's a real blessing is it not to your heart and to mine friends if you have your bible i invite you to open them with me at luke chapter 19 luke chapter 19 we're thinking this weekend about time i hope that you remember to change the clock it's not as bad this weekend as it is in march isn't that right for in March, if you, you forget, well, you end up an hour late. At least this weekend, you've had an hour extra in bed and you might arrive at a meeting or an engagement early, but you don't arrive late. Let's listen to God's word as is found in Luke chapter 19 and reading from verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and he could not for the press because he was of little stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him 
and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste, and came down, and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he had gone to be the guest with a man that was a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come into this house, for as much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. Apply the word of God to our hearts. Bless it to us now. In Jesus, our Saviour's name. Amen. Friends, we want to look at a man tonight who realised the importance of time. And I hope and pray that you do the same as you join us online for this gospel meeting. Zacchaeus, we read, was the name of this man. And the first thing I want you to note, he was a man of position. Jesus had entered in, in verse 1, to the city of Jericho. And there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was chief amongst the publicans and was rich. What does that tell us about this man? He was a man of position. A publican did not mean that he owned a public house. No, a publican in these days in which Jesus lived was not the owner of the local establishment, but rather he was of the inland revenue. A publican was a tax collector, we would call him today. And it says that he was no ordinary one, but he was the chief amongst the publicans, which would mean that he was the head man in the inland revenue and it was his job in the city of Jericho and the surrounding reason, region to collect all the taxes. So friends the first thing that that made him was a collaborator with the Romans because at this time Israel was under the rule of the Caesar from Rome and that meant that people would have viewed him differently. They would have seen beyond this man of position and they would have viewed him as a collaborator and a traitor. Why a traitor? Well, those taxes that he was collecting were going towards reinforcing Roman rule in Israel. They helped to keep the civil government and governance running smoothly. So he would not have been liked because he was viewed as a collaborator and a traitor with Rome. Friends, yes, he was a man of position, but not only was he wealthy and did he have a position within society, but he was viewed as a collaborator, a traitor. He was also known that publicans, and particularly the chief publican, that they also, friends, were corrupt. How was that? Well, you see, the system in those days was open to abuse. They didn't have online financial means by which they're to uh, give an accountant their uh, evidence of whether they were honest or not. It was every man to himself. Uh, and we know at the end of this story that Zacchaeus said to the Lord, and if I've stole something or taken something by false accusation, I restore four times. And that tells us there that this system was open to financial abuse. And what happened was the Romans set a levy and they set their level. And let's say they told Zacchaeus, we want 10,000 denarii, which was the currency then raised, to cover our expenses and to help our government rule. Well, he had to ensure then that he got that 10,000. But if by means... He collected 15. The other five went to his own pocket. So it was in his interest, literally, to tax the public to the hilt. And friends, because of this fraud, there he wasn't only viewed as corrupt, but also as a thief. And that's why the Lord Jesus, that he said, For the Son of Man is to come 
and to seek and to save that which was lost. And the people themselves murmured when Jesus went to his home. In verse 7, that he went to be the guest with a man that is a sinner. You see, the public perception of this man, Zacchaeus. He was a man of position, but he was a man that was also lost. Friends, he could have all the treasures that this world could offer. But there's one thing that's evident that he didn't have on his side, and that was time. Yes. Oh, he had all the treasures, but he didn't have all the time. And maybe tonight you are rather like the case. Now, certainly I'm not suggesting that you have defrauded anyone, government or God or anyone there. But, but friends, it seems you have all the treasures, all the worth, all the wealth. But if you don't have Jesus, in reality, you have nothing. For what shall it prosper a man? If he should gain the whole world or a woman and yet lose their own soul. So friends, firstly, we see the case, the man of position. But we also see the case, the man of preoccupation. We read of that in verses 3 and 4. And he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the press or for the multitude of people because he was of little stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. What does this tell us about Zacchaeus? Was he a curious man? I'm sure he was. For it says, and he sought to see Jesus who he was. You see, everyone in Jericho were seeking to see Jesus who he was. Yeah, the Lord in Luke chapter 18 had already performed a notable miracle. There was a man as Jesus entered into the city called Bartimaeus. We commonly know him as blind Bartimaeus. And as Jesus passed by, he made himself heard above the multitude amongst the press of people. Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And if he shouted and yelled that out once, he'd done it a dozen times. But the Lord heard him the first time and the Lord turned to him and the Lord asked him what his need was. And he said, Lord, that I might see. Well, I tell you now, when the Lord laid his hand upon him, he not only received physical sight, but spiritual intuition because he realized that he was sinful and he professed Christ as saviour. And news, no doubt, had got to Zacchaeus' office. Maybe the office boy had come running in and the door bursting open and he said to his master, he said, Zacchaeus, sir, he says, you'll never believe it. There's a man in town called Jesus and he has healed. Remember the wee man that sits there at the gate of the city, at the outpost of the city, the blind man, Bartimaeus, he's healed, he can see. You need to come and see this man. And so it was. That's the case. It was curiosity and he sought to see Jesus as well as the rest of the city. But can I say this? I believe there was more than curiosity. I believe there was concern. Why did I say that? Upon what basis do I say that? Well, if it had been curiosity, once the case being small of stature or height couldn't get to Jesus through the press of the multitude, he would have given up. You see, if you have curiosity there, you, you, you want to know, you want to see. But if there's a lot of barriers in front of you, and, and it proves almost impossible, you say, ah, I couldn't be bothered with that. Isn't that right? You'll say, ah, he'll be back another time. Ah, 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 there'll be always another day. Ah, ah, and curiosity will take you so far, but when there's barriers and problems, etc., you, you give up easy. That's why I say he had a concern. And friends, I tell you now, this man had a concern, and that concern was about his soul. He was concerned, as Jesus said, he had come to seek and to save that which was lost. He was concerned he was lost. He suddenly realized, and there was a dawning upon his heart, if this Jesus could cure a man who has been blind, well then he could save a sinner like me. And if he took time to speak to Bartimaeus 
and people nearly walk over him, never mind by him every day, surely he may well take the time to speak to a sinner like me. And maybe there's someone watching on tonight and you are like the case. You are curious and by that fact you're watching on in this service. And you understand there something of your nature, spiritually speaking, that you're lost as well. But you're wondering, would Jesus even have interest in me? I can answer that curiosity. I can answer that concern. Yes, he has. Jesus is interested even in you. Because he come to seek and to save those which are lost. You, my friend. And Zacchaeus' concern wasn't only there because he was lost but because he was loved he would come to realize that jesus would go to any length to reach out to him not only walk in under a sycamore tree and speak to him but he would even go to his own home and be criticized by others that he had gone to be the guest in the house of a man that was a sinner jesus ultimately went to calvary on your behalf and mine and there he gave up his own life he shed his precious blood to save your soul and mine that's how much he loves you my friends i tell you now zacchaeus was a man of position but it really meant nothing to him he could have all the wealth that the world could offer but if his soul was lost he had nothing nothing of eternal value friends he was a man of preoccupation and i tell you now friends this man was worried he was concerned that he might pass out of this life into eternity without christ you see he realized that time was short he realized that jesus was passing this way but once there's a hymn that says life at best is very brief like the falling off a leaf and we see the falling of leaves this autumn time like the binding off a sheep Chief, be in time, be in time. Friends, while the voice of Jesus calls you, be in time. If in sin you longer wait, you may find the open gate. You can cry and it just be too late. For that gate will close and that time of opportunity will be gone be in time so you need to be be in time you be in time for work don't you you be in time if you're a young person there for turning up to school or to an appointment well you need to be in time for your appointment with the lord jesus a man of position a man of preoccupation a man of providence and what i mean by that is when things began to turn and things began to happen he began to respond you see, we read that Jesus spoke to him in verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must abide at your house. And it says, and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. People often ask me, Pastor, how can I be saved? Or what must I do? What, what's necessary for me to be saved? And here's the first thing that I'm going to tell you that you need to do there if you are ever going to be saved. Friends, you need to make haste. Listen, whenever Jesus passed by that place, it was the sycamore tree that Zacchaeus was hanging out of, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste. He didn't say, Zacchaeus, stay up there. Zacchaeus, don't you worry, I'll be back tomorrow, or I'll be back next week or next year, and I'll see you then. No, it's now. Make haste. The Lord says to you, my friend, as you watch on online th this service and this sermon, make haste. Salvation is not tomorrow. It is today. And we see that Zacchaeus had learned that lesson, and he realized that he must respond, and his response must be, immediate it was an urgent request and he immediately responded because he came down he made haste and he came down he couldn't care less if he slid down if he fell down he had to get down friends we see there there was haste 
But I tell you something else there must be if you're going to get saved. Humility. Humility. Because he got down as quickly as he could. He was down now at the feet of Jesus. And you too must get down to the feet of Jesus. It's only there when you are humbled and all the pride's gone, all the passion's gone, and you are before the Lord a sinner condemned unclean, that the Lord and his Spirit can begin to work in your life. Oh, friends, this evening, are you making haste? I hope and pray you are. Are you humbling yourself before the Lord? You see, Zacchaeus realised it would not be his time, his place, his way or manner of choosing. It was the Lord's time, the Lord's place, the Lord's way or manner of choosing, or none at all. That's what salvation is about. You have to make haste. Whilst the Lord's calling, you must obey his call and respond. You must humble yourself. It's the Lord's way or no way. You see, he recognised that Jesus' word, make haste, was the call to him. And he obeyed. He responded and he came. Come now. Today, not tomorrow. And also, he was reminded not only of the Lord's word, but the Lord's work. On the cross, Jesus cried out, It is finished, was his cry. And that wasn't his life. He didn't say, I am finished. Because Jesus is alive today, rose again from the dead on the third day. He's now seated on high in glory. He's going to break through the clouds and come to the earth to rapture and take his church home one day. Friends, it is finished was his work, not his person. And that reminds us just not of his call, but his crucifixion. And friends, we think there of his call, it's persistent. He's calling you tonight of his work and crucifixion. It's powerful. It's able to save to the uttermost. Why? When Jesus was sentenced at the place we read in John chapter 19 called Gabbatha, there, friends, he stood in your place and mine as he received the sentence and was condemned. Then, friends, as he was sacrificed, that wasn't at Gabbatha, that was at a place called Golgotha in the Hebrew. There it just wasn't in our place he stood. It was their punishment that he took upon his own body on that tree. And then, friends, Jesus not only sentenced, Jesus not only sacrificed, but sovereign and Lord over all, including Satan, including death, including sin. And in the garden there, he overcome all of those things. And remember, the stole was rolled away. The soldiers, they fled away. And our sins are washed away through the shedding of his precious blood. Can I hear a hallelujah, amen? For that is good news indeed to you and to me this evening. Friends, Zacchaeus, we have read of him, a man of position, a man of preoccupation, a man of providence that when things began to happen, he began to respond. Zacchaeus finally, a man of pardon. Do you notice how he received Jesus in verse 6? And you can receive him no other way. It says, and he made haste and came down and received him, received Jesus joyfully. If anyone ever receives Jesus any other way, I most assuredly say to you that we're never saved in the first place. Because what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I can say that away back in 1985 at the end of the month of January, when Jesus came into my heart and my life, he changed me, he transformed me, he saved me. And so when he come in to the life and heart of Zacchaeus, he received him joyfully as a saviour. He brought him into his house. But I tell you, before he had even done that, his heart had rejoiced in the Lord and he'd been saved. And friends, there we find that he repented of his sins there. Because in verse 8, he says, Half of my goods... 
Lord, all the work and all the labor that I've done, honestly, half of them there, I give to the poor. Here you are, here you are. And he began to distribute and he began to donate there because he had been saved, not to make him saved, not to get saved, but because he was saved, he become generous and give to the poor. And then he took and anything that he had taken by a fraudulent manner, and he, he says that there, anything I've taken by false accusation, I restore fourfold, and the law demanded that if you had done that, and that was an act of re repentance there. He was shown to all the public, if I've taken five pounds from you, well, well fourfold there, five fours, that's twenty I give back to you there. And friends, he, he cleared the, the slate clean, didn't they? This man had a new life and a new beginning in Jesus and he was rejoicing in his saviour and over his salvation. For Jesus said, for today is salvation come to this house for as much as he also is the son of Abraham. What did that mean, the son of Abraham? Abraham was the son of promise. God had promised him a land. God promises you and me as he did Zacchaeus, a land that is fairer than day. It's called heaven. And that's a promise that you receive when you take Jesus as your own and personal saviour. He was the son of provision. There, He received the Lord, not only the promise of the land, but also of the Lord's love from the beginning to the end of his life. The Lord kept him, the Lord blessed him, the Lord saved him, the Lord sustained him. And he promises that same love to you and to me as well. Oh, friends, John 1 and 12 says this. But as many as received him, he gave to them the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. Have you turned from your sin? Are you trusting in Jesus as your saviour? For the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Friend, I began this message by asking, did you remember about time? Did you remember to change your clock today? I hope you did. But ultimately, forgiving would just cost you an hour. Can I say this? Solemnly as I conclude, if you neglect the time of your salvation, it'll cost you more than an hour. It'll cost you more than an arm and a leg. It'll cost you your soul. May the Lord give you deciding grace tonight to receive Jesus as your own and personal saviour. Time. Zacchaeus realised it was short. Time. He realised it was sure. Time. He realised it was time to seek the Lord and to get saved, and he did. May you do the same tonight. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray that if anyone is watching this online service and has heard the call of the Lord and is concerned about their soul and their salvation, that now, Lord, where they are, they commend themselves to thee. They call out unto the Lord, Jesus, save me a sinner and they receive Jesus into their hearts and lives. Lord, do a wondrous and wonderful work of saving grace in the heart of all who watch on. In thy name, amen. And if you would like to be saved or like to know more about salvation, please feel free there to contact me, there to send a text via my personal mobile number or contact a Christian there, whether it's me or another Christian, that doesn't matter, but that you turn to the Lord and trust in him as your own and personal saviour, that is what is vital. Thank you again for joining us tonight for our evening service at Dunseverick Baptist. I really do appreciate wherever you've joined us from, throughout the province and maybe further afield, thank you so much. May the Lord continue to bless you as we enter this new week and indeed very much enter into not just the autumn but into the winter season and may you do so trusting in Jesus all the way. We conclude our service 
with our final hymn. And as we do, I'm just going to pray and then we'll praise God with our final hymn. Dear Lord, I pray bless all who's joined us tonight in our online service. Lord, have your hand upon them. Save them, we pray. And Lord, sustain each and every day. Bless us, Lord, and our loved ones. Bless our fellowship here at Dunseverick and other fellowships further afield. In Christ our Saviour's name, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. And until the next time that we gather here in Dunseverick Baptist Church, may the Lord bless and keep you always. Amen. Good night.